Titans, welcome back for our 16th season of Titan Sports. I'm Chloe Abbott. And I'm Michael Patterson. It's halfway through September and we're in the thick of our fall sports coverage, reporting on women's volleyball, men's and women's basketball, men's and women's golf, women's tennis, cross country, and men's and women's soccer. But while we were on a bit of a break, the men's soccer team was hard at work. Yeah, Michael, our men's soccer team is off to a 2-2-4 and four start. They ended last year as Big West champions and competed in the NCAA tournament. As for this season, they still have a few preseason games left before their conference opener. We have our very own Jacqueline Davis with highlights of their most recent home game against Cornell. Fullerton at home against Cornell wants to get their third win in a row. First half, Ross McPhee rips a shot between two defenders. Fullerton on the board, 1-0. Second half is a different story. Harry Fuller chases down the ball, crosses in, Zabox Wixell heads it in, game tied 1-1. One one. 73rd minute, still locked at 1, Amika Anelli comes up with the loose ball to score the winning goal. Cornell wins 2-1. to one. We had the 1-0 one lead and I think that was kind of a false like, barrier like we thought. We had 1-0 over right and we just kind of in the second half on the back and there has to be a lesson from this game for all of our players. There has to be a lesson of, of the pride playing here at this university when we're on our field. I did not see the level lift, and that has to change. That has to change dramatically. I mean, and, and it's not something you can call a timeout for. I thought I, I, I discussed it at halftime, and that we, that's, you know, that's what we needed, and, and, uh, and those details cost us. Fullerton snaps their two-game winning streak, putting them with a record of 2-2-3. and three. Their next game is at Florida Gulf Coast, and their next home game is against St. Francis. I'm Jacqueline Davis with Titan Sports, signing off. Thanks, Jacqueline. The men of Titan Soccer had their most recent game against Florida Gulf Coast on Wednesday. The game finished with the final score of 1-1 in double overtime. Freshman DJ Wilson came in clutch, scoring the game-tying goal in the 90th minute to force overtime. The team looks to finish up a couple more preseason games until they play CSUN in their conference opener on October 3rd. The women's soccer team entered the season as the reigning Big West tournament champions, giving them a berth in the NCAA tournament. They currently have a record of 3-5-1, with their most recent game being a 2-1 loss to Grand Canyon University. Kristen Swales had the lone goal for Fullerton, scoring a header off of a corner kick in the 83rd minute. The Titans will look to finish the preseason strong before playing Long Beach State in their conference opener on the 27th. Now to the hardwood, women's volleyball had a rough season last year, but are off to a solid start this fall. We sent Kush Parikh to get the inside scoop on their early success. Titan Volleyball is on a mission to show the Big West they are not the same team as previous years. After winning just five games in 2017, they've already surpassed that win total in September. Third year coach Ashley Preston looks to lead the turnaround with conference play just starting. started with the recruitment of our student athletes. Um, we have nine freshmen um, who have all lifted the competitive play in the gym as well as uh, three junior college players who uh, brought some experience with them too. One of the reasons for Fullerton's improvement is thanks to senior outside hitter Madeline Schneider. Schneider ranked in the top 10 in kills for the Big West last season and is on track to repeat the same feature this season. As far as my individual stats and them showing, I think that just goes back to like showing how much like hard work my setters put in and same with my back row. Like I can't get half the kills I do if I don't have a passer there behind me that's really solid and same with my setters. They're amazing this year. So it's really helpful to have like a solid team right behind me. Grossmount transfer Felicia Marshall leads the team in double doubles and has been critical to the team's early success. I think it's uh, confidence, has to do with a lot of confidence. I think as long as we stay together and continue to work hard and push each other and hold each other accountable like we have, I think we should be doing good, like keep up our success. As good as their non-conference record is, the team wants to show the Big West that they will be a squad to watch out for in conference play. From Titan Gym, I'm Kush Parikh, Titan Sports. Thanks, Kush, for that awesome inside scoop. The team lost their conference opener against CSUN by the score of three sets to zero. They look to turn things around with their next game on Friday, September 21st, and their conference home opener against the Cal Poly Mustangs at Titan Gym. Sports wasn't the only thing being talked about this weekend. There were plenty of points scored, but there were even more awards won at the Emmys. Let's send it over to Brandy for this week's edition of What the Tusk.
Thank you, Chloe. And What the Tusk is up, Titans? My name is Brandy, and yes, I am the new host of What the Tusk. Jessica just kind of up and left on us. Ugh, rude, I know. I'm kidding. I mean, I guess she had to graduate, move on to bigger, better things, and blah, blah, blah. But don't worry, because your girl B is here to stay, and due to my impending fear of loneliness, I decided to hire this cute little thing with a bad attitude next to me <laughs> to keep me company while we talk about what's going on in the world. And her name is Ashling. Girl, what is up? Are you ready to do this? Hi, Brandy. Well, um, I was kind of born to do this job. I got a lot of opinions on a lot of things that really matter and everybody needs to know. My opinions have also been known to be fact about 80% of the time, so... Um, <laughs> agree to disagree unless we agree. <laughs> All right, now let's get this show on the road. What are we going to talk about first? Well, I think that we should start with Cardi and Nikki. Brandy, how do you feel about this beef? It's been going on for a little while, and there was the physical altercation, and then Nikki calling Cardi out on Queen Radio. I don't know. What's your take on it? All right, so I'm going to simplify this beef for everyone right now with two points. Point number one, Nikki has been the queen of rap for 12 years, and my personal ride or die mm -hmm. since I was about in seventh grade. Now, nobody can deny that her flow is ridiculous, but the way she's acting right now, reeks of desperation i mean the for i mean do you remember with the whole travis scott thing absolutely T like so childish i really honestly couldn't believe that she did it especially since she, she holds herself to such a high standard and consistently talks about i'm nikki i'm the queen but like you're a queen but you don't got a number one album and you were really bitter about it like if you yeah. produce an album and you're proud of that and that's how you feel putting out your work whether it's on the charts or not it shouldn't matter like you own up to that this is what you like to do you don't have to have a number one to be the number one exactly and Nikki and Cardi B, first and second point, their beef, they're both two different artists. Cardi, they're both hip hop rap artists, but I feel like the fans kind of pit them against each other. Absolutely. Nicki Minaj, Cardi B, two completely different sounds. They could have succeeded, succeeded together, but now Cardi B's kind of going up, 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 and Nicki Minaj just like trashing on people's kids. Yeah. Like, what is that? I mean, that's where I lose respect. I don't know. And I agree. people, and I, and I uh, commend Cardi B for throwing the shoe at her. She honestly probably would have hit her if there was like what there wasn't like seven securities. And in the video, I think it's amazing. Check it out right now. And that all happened at a red carpet event in New York Fashion Week. Ridiculous. But speaking about red carpet events, let's talk about the Emmys. Now, this is the part of the show where we get to participate in one of my favorite activities of all time, judging people based on their appearances. Ashling, who we got first? I think we need to start with Jennifer Lewis. She has this red Nike outfit on. It looks like the check is bling. Um, I think it's a super interesting choice of outfit for a carpet event, especially with the high top shoes. Um, I don't know. How do you feel about this? Well... I, I'm a Nike girl. I love Nike, but if I'm going to the Emmys, I'm going to go out in bling, but not with just a swoop. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going to go out in a dress, the whole nine yards. I mean, everybody does have their style. That is a really cool sweater. I would wear that maybe, like, to school next week, though, but <laughs> maybe not, you know, the Emmys. <laughs> I think we definitely, this is a school outfit. You're rolling out of bed to go. Next, I think we need to talk about Sandra Oh. She looks stunning in this red dress. It's a deep V. She's got the little cute body for it, and it's silk. I think she looks fresh. First of all, I love her. Second of all, look how classic and elegant she looks. Oh, my God. And it's just so simple with just, like, look at that little belt line. I love everything about this. I love her. Long live, Sandro. Long. Love it. Um, next, we got to talk about Millie Bobby Brown. First of all, she is the cutest little human I've ever seen in my life. Amazing. Absolutely adore her. And I probably should know this, but I did not know that she had a full-blown British accent. Had no idea. I honestly didn't either. Um, I'm one of the rare people who didn't watch Stranger Things, so I thought the shows were really long. Yeah, I didn't watch it either. Okay, great. I'm glad we're on the same page. But she, she looks so cute, and she looks very put together. Like, it's like when we were growing up, like, people who were come to these conference events, like, look very, like, wild or would wear ripped jeans and, like, long t-shirts, you know? Yeah. Like, she looks very yeah. elegant and very put together. Uh, she's beautiful. She's a beautiful little girl. Please, Hollywood, do not ruin her. Literally, do not ruin her. Don't do it. Next up, we have Sarah Paulson. I'm going to throw this out there. I think she looks American Horror Story film ready. <laughs> she looks like she's about ready to go into the coffin. Well, she does look very pale, and that dress is not helping out. It is a beautiful dress, but come on, girl. You got a million dollars. I know you do. Come on, get a spray tan. Yeah, get a spray tan. Something. Come on. Next up, we have Scarlett Johansson. Okay. <laughs> Scarlett Johansson <laughs> is the most beautiful woman ever right now. Honestly, 
And look at the, oh my gosh. And like that dress, the wrench up, you see a little leg and the classic shoe. Look at that strap and the ankle strap. I know. It's just so, so classic and very elegant. It's just a very like white dress. Like you can see there's some, st some things on there, but she just looks very elegant. Her hair is very simple and the dangly earrings. She just looks very elegant put together. You could just tell it's just like that she's like, this is not my first rodeo. Yeah. I'm just going to come a little down a little bit and it's amazing. Absolutely. And... What do we have here? What is this? <laughs> what? Look, she is an amazing comedian. I love her to death. But girl, come on. I know. We got to we got to talk about this pink pantsuit. She suit. looks like a disco ball gone wrong. I know. Okay, now we have Chrissy Teigen. She looks absolutely stunning. Chrissy Teigen looks amazing. She's a bad mama Gemma. Look at her. She's so cute. And I love the dress. She always steals the show. Always. always. Absolutely always. And speaking of Chrissy Teigen, who looked absolutely stunning. Did you see the video of her on Instagram talking about her last name? Yeah, I had no idea. It's pronounced Tygen, not Tegan. Poor John. She stays stealing the thunder all the time, and you know she wears the pants in that relationship. I know. Honestly, I love them together, though. Like, they're so funny. And she's always very active on Instagram and Twitter and keeps up with her fans and things, and yeah. I think that's the coolest thing. Yeah, it's like she has a perfect mom job, you know? She's stay-at-home mom on Twitter, Instagram, social media. Yeah, you know. I wish I could. I'm a, that's what I want to be. Yeah, I know. Speaking of stealing thunder, Glenn Wise kind of asked a pretty major question in front of probably a million people watching at home and a lot of A-list celebrities. Check it out. Mom always believed in finding the sunshine in things, and she adored my girlfriend, Jan. Jan, you are the sunshine in my life. And Mom was right, don't ever let go of your sunshine. You wonder why I don't like to call you my girlfriend? Because I want to call you my wife. Oh my God. What? Honestly, like, I would probably react the same exact way. That is Absolutely. so beautiful. I would also probably be extremely nervous because everybody's watching you. Scarlett Johansson is watching you go on stage. Yeah. And post I, you. That's amazing. I also so read an article that his kids had no idea that he was doing this. <gasps> oh, it was a surprise so for everyone. I'd be like, oh my God, new family. Uh, That's so cool. That I is thought it was so great. cute. I love it. And next on the docket, a little birdie told me that the Buffalo Bills cornerback Vontae Davis just decided to retire at halftime at the Sunday game against the Chargers. Well, that's great. A little birdie told you because he didn't sell anyone. And after the first drive, he decided he was only in for one, one drive. And then at halftime, he decided, you know what? I'm good, and he bounced. In this statement he released after Sunday's game, he said, and I quote, I meant no disrespect to my teammates and coaches, but I hold myself to a standard. Mentally, I always expect myself to play at a high level, but physically, I know today that isn't possible. And I had an honest moment with myself while I was on the field. I just didn't feel right. And I told the coaches, I'm not feeling like myself. And so then he said, peace. He literally had a one year, $5 million contract. He couldn't hold it out for a year. Five Just million dollars? One year. It's the for bills. Five million dollars. It's the bills, bro. Like, yeah. nobody's expecting nothing I from know. you. I know. Like, you're you can, not, you know, you're not going nowhere. Yeah, there's like, no you playoffs. Could, yeah, yeah. You just got to ride out this season. You just got to ride out. Maybe you just didn't like to lose, which I mean, I get. I hate losing. I get. I, yeah, I do but not I like losing. I lose for five million dollars. That's what I'm saying. I would I lose, lose for five for million dollars. I'd lose, I'd lose. Absolutely. 100%. I'd lose all of I think year. I'm just baffled by the fact that at halftime he was like, Peace. Yeah. Like, how do you just casually just be like, this is it? I'm done. Yeah, and I think it's funny in his statement how he said, I meant no disrespect, but that was probably blatant disrespect that was the most disrespect i've ever seen <laughs> i know that's not a team player yeah and like it made national news now the bills look even worse than they already did poor things well all right you guys that's all we have for you this week be sure to watch us next time and we will let you know what the task is going on now back to those beautiful faces in the desk thanks ladies so chloe whose team are you on team nikki or team cardi cardi b all the way nikki's washed out i'm over her I'm just going to say it, that's wrong. You're wrong. Cardi, Cardi B is not near, nearly as talented as Nicki Minaj is. Okay, so I guess we're just agreeing to disagree. But up next, we have a brand new segment called In Case You Missed It, hosted by our very own Alex Lustig. Alex? Hello, everyone, and welcome to In Case You Missed It. I'm Alex Lustig, and here's a quick, re quick recap of the games you missed from the past week. The women's cross-country team was led by freshman Lucia Vincent, who finished the course in 70-10, en route to placing third overall and helping Fullerton win the UCSB Laguna Open. The men's team finished third overall at the event. Heading into golf, the women's team placed third on the first day of the battle at Old Works Tournament and came in fifth on the second day. As for the men's golf team, 
They placed in the top eight on the first day of the Rams Master Invitational and 10th on the second day. The women's soccer team lost 2-1 to at Grand Canyon this past weekend. The only goal for Cal State Fullerton was scored in the 83rd minute by Kristen Swales. As for the men's soccer squad, they tied in double overtime against Florida Gulf Coast University by a sco final score of 1-1. to It is their fourth tie this season. The women's volleyball team lost their first conference match to Cal State Northridge by a final score of 3-0. Want to Wanna stay updated with the rest of the games this week? We will now go over to Alexandra Exparza, who has more. Thank you, Alex. Now looking at future games, Cross Country will travel to St. Paul, Minnesota, where they'll compete in the Roy Griak invite on September 29th. Men's golf travels to Colorado for the Mark Simpson Invitational on September 24th and 25th. Women's golf, for women's golf, they have a small break but will hit the road to Palm Desert to compete in the Cowgirl Desert Intercollegiate on September 29th and 30th. Kicking it off to soccer, the men's team will host St. Francis on Sunday, September 23rd. It'll be a part of a doubleheader with the women's team to celebrate their first Commissioner Cup win in school history. They, ha they then have a couple preseason games before hosting their conference opener against CSUN on October 3rd. It'll be an orange out, so make sure you bring your Titan spirit. This, the women's team will visit the University of San Diego on September 21st and then play their first conference game of the season at home against rivals Long Beach State on the 27th. Crossing it from the field to the court, the women's, volley women's volleyball will play their biggest home game of the season when they take on 15th ranked Cal Poly on the 21st. Then they'll say aloha as they travel to Hawaii to face the Rainbow Warriors Friday, September 28th. That's it for this week's Titan Timeline. I'm Alex Esparza. Back to you guys in the studio. Well, folks, that looks like that's all we have for you today. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. You can catch our past episodes and game highlight packages on our Titan Sports YouTube channel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at CSUF Titan Sports and like us on Facebook to stay connected with us. On behalf of our Titan Sports team, I'm Michael Patterson. And I'm Chloe Abbott. Remember to keep those tusks up, Titans, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.